Hi everyone, for those new to my channel, I'm Siam Shridnur, a Bangladeshi rising senior studying applied math at Harvard. If you are new to this playlist or this channel, I'm letting you know that this playlist is a playlist where I interview amazing people who got into top universities across the world to, say, to share some guidance, to share some advice and whatnot. If you are waiting for the video of your dream university or an FAQ that you have been meaning to ask and meaning to get answered, for more videos, subscribe immediately, smash that thumbs up button. As you know, every interview, I ask people in the comment section down below what video they want to see next and based on the most popular request, I make a video. So if you want your voice to be heard and at the same time, if you want to get updated, when we release the interview, you have to subscribe right now. So let's push that aside and introduce our wonderful guest today. Our wonderful guest is Shweta Mojumdar, Brown's class of 2021. It is to be mentioned that during her time of admission, she got into Brown, which is a prestigious Ivy League university for those who don't know. And at the same time, she got into the most competitive engineering institution in Bangladesh called Buet. Buet allows 8,000 applicants to give exam from hundreds of thousands of applicants in Bangladesh and then only 1,000 approximately get in. So as you can imagine, it's extremely competitive. And at the same time, BUET students, uh, BUET admission is easier, I guess, almost for students coming from a national curriculum background. However, Shweta came from an A-levels or uh, English medium curriculum popularly known as Bangladesh. So she had her fair share of difficulties. This video is about how she managed to tackle Ivy League admissions and Buet admissions at the same time. So stay tuned. So Shweta, I have spoken for a long time now. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Shweta Majumdar and um, I, I was born in Dhaka and um, raised in Dhaka and Saudi Arabia. Another story, but yeah, I am uh, studying engineering physics at Brown University and I'm in my senior year right now. Yeah. Thank you, Shweta, for your introduction. So for the audience, we're going to watch this interview. We are going to talk, talk about a few topics. Number one is how did Shweta, before she started the whole process, plan all of it? Then we're going to talk about what her day to day looked like, what her week to week looked like. Then we're going to talk about specific challenges she had to face coming from an English medium background while tackling BUET admissions. Then finally, she's going to talk about what she would have done differently and moments of failure, moments of victory and what each moment was like. So let's start with number one. Shweta, when you just graduated high school and you realized that your parents or whatever or your, you wanted to go into BUET and at the same time you have higher ambitions uh, to go into top U.S. admissions. How did you plan all of that when in that overwhelmed state? Um, so I always wa I always wanted to apply abroad, even if I, you know, even if I didn't get in, I always wanted to apply and see if, how well I would do in in that. Uh, and my parents really wanted me to apply to Buet and Tech University. Uh, so at that time when I was almost going to graduate uh, high school, I'm going to finish my A-levels. Um, I actually told my parents that I want to start take my uh, take SATs, IELTS and all of that. Uh, and at first they thought that I was just kidding. <laughs> so, I, uh, so after that, I had to like actually tell them that yes, I am serious about it. I'm going to apply. And then, um, and then I basically tried to plan out what I would do and um, the first thing is it didn't go as planned. I thought I would take my SATs like senior year of high school and then get a good score and maybe that would be it. But that didn't happen so I had to take another sitting with uh, my BUET exams and uh, I had to take TOEFL as well like with the BUET exams so yeah so I think uh, the mo the biggest part was like I kept the, my goals in place that yes I'm going to uh, I'm going to apply to abroad universities doesn't matter if I get in doesn't matter uh, doesn't matter um, if I get re rejected anything 
but i would also apply uh, appease my parents and apply to like local universities yeah i also wanted to see how well i do in it and i like taking i like studying different things so i wanted to see how the bengali medium curriculum was as well yeah. okay uh, so i'm getting a few things here one thing is that you are kind of motivated that hey i don't care if i get rejected i want to see this through and i think that was something which played a strong part during my application process as well because i was determined that hey i don't care if i don't get it i want to complete the process and that played out well for you and at the same time you like studying you like learning new things so you're you're like i want to see what the bengali medium curriculum look like uh, so when we talk about planning in which months after graduation did you give each of the exams oh okay so um my first sat is i don't remember the complete uh complete uh month but i can see uh, a range okay during my uh, uh the um, the first sat is i took was bef- before my a levels and my a levels were in january 2016 okay was around like uh, late 2015 okay and i didn't i ended up not doing that well but like later i think i took it in march or may something may okay uh, i took the re- design cities that time it was the second i think second uh yeah exam of re- design it just ACT. changed in it march changed, 20, yeah, 2016 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah it just changed in march so i took it after one or two uh, sittings after uh ielts i took uh during july and toefl was a bit later uh like okay. november ish it toefl i remember toefl exams were pretty near my buet exams actually oh wow and yeah. buet is like november right november it's, it's yeah. yeah yeah okay wow that was crazy it um, was a crazy time <laughs> uh, like i'm i'm noticing you give both the ielts and toefl was there a specific reason as to why you did it actually that was stupidity on my part because <laughs> i i thought that everyone would take ielts Okay. Uh, because uh, everywhere you go they talk about IELTS more than TOEFL. Yeah. But then I looked into the websites of MIT, Harvard, Brown and all those uh, East Coast universities and they wanted TOEFL. So I had okay. to take TOEFL. I saw that and then I was like yeah I should take TOEFL as okay. well if I wanted to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for those watching this interview, one thing to know is times have changed and universities have started to become more easygoing when it comes to standardized exams. So if you're coming from a background which teaches primarily in English, uh, you can get the TOEFL IELTS uh, waived these days. You can also submit the Duolingo English requirement. Or if you have a strong score in the SAT's English section, you can also get um these exams waived in a lot of universities it really depends on the universities but like when we were applying i think it was a little less easy going so yeah. like out of fear we we're like hey no hey like we might as well uh, yeah. give the exams um i didn't give it because i gave the sat first and that english score kind of waived my uh, me from the different uh, english proficiency components but uh, most of my friends gave the 12 all okay we talked about how you chartered your plan throughout the months what did your day to day studying look like can you like walk us through a day in the life of shweta during the admissions process <laughs> um so uh i started uh, i started uh, preparing for all the admission exams and everything uh when my a levels were done that is um february uh, february of 2016 and the the first thing i would have to do is go to sunrise coaching center okay for my uh, to study for buet and dhaka university exams and then i'd come back and uh, because i didn't go to coaching the se- coaching centers in uh, for sats or ielts or toefl i would spend a lot of my time on my laptop looking for different um, resources okay and uh, ways to study for the sats Okay. I also did another thing and that was uh I would sometimes go to the EMK library. Okay. EMK Central Library which is uh 500 taka per uh, per year I think. Okay. But they have all the books all uh, and they have like new books as well, uh, updated books 
on all the prep exams. Oh, so you wow. can just like sit there and study for a while and keep the book back. But it's a very good place for uh, studying for uh, for the standardized exams. So okay. I did that sometimes as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, so to recap, you went to Sunrise, you uh, studied for Buet during your time at Sunrise, and you came back. You used the web to look for different types of resources uh, yeah. with relevant uh, with regards to U.S. admissions, and also you went to EMK Center. Uh, which has uh, kind of a fee of 500 taka per year for membership where they have all the test prep books for different types of uh, standardized exams yeah. and you use that resource as well. Um, yeah. So now that we have covered your day to day, uh, was there like a specific amount of hours that you studied uh, if you could ballpark it? Because I remember studying around 10 to 14 hours every day during those times, it was crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, that uh, I can see. Yeah, I have done that too, to be honest. Like <laughs> I would uh, study crazy hours, um, like yeah, 10 to 14 hours per day sometimes. Sometimes I'd like stay up at night to study as well. Um, and yeah, I think that that was it. And I think I studied more for BUET exams than FAT. Yeah, same, because, same, yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, I think uh, that's like a completely different curriculum and I had to uh, catch it up fast. Yeah, Yeah. so it's like, honestly, for the split for me was if I studied 14 hours per day, I would study 10 hours for medical and the rest four would be for IBA and SAT. Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, uh, I'm assuming it's a similar split it's for a, you? A similar split for me, too, yeah. Okay. Uh, and they um, would give us so many homeworks, like from Boer, uh, the yeah. Sunrise Coaching Center, that you have to, like, finish that. Yeah. And then maybe have some time to study for SAT. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a good breakdown of day to day. Uh, let's talk about how your day to day priorities kind of changed on a week to week basis as time went. So I'm assuming that as your application deadlines got closer or as your BUET exam got closer, your priorities kind of sh shifted uh, around here and there. How did that happen? And can you walk us through um, that process? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, I think because I took the SATs during March or like May, that time of the year, um, I think right uh, I think one or two weeks right before my ACT exam, I completely dropped BUET, uh, BUET studies and everything, okay. BUET and U studies and tried to solely focus on ACTs and I would just write things down from uh, different resources. I tried to like, um, I tried to read and write, uh, like uh, prepare as much as possible uh, for those two uh, weeks before my ACTs exam. So that's some uh, that's the time when it changed but I had to go back I had to catch up to wit studies again after my ACTs were done yeah I think I think uh, a good advice if you ask me would be to prioritize as time goes and maybe like have a balance at first like have study for both but be, right before the exam maybe try to focus on the thing you're studying yeah, I 100% agree because I remember um, I had my SAT on October 7th, 6th, mm -hmm. kind of that region and my national medical exam for like October 14th or 15th. Oh, damn. So when, when October started, I just dropped my medical books and started studying for the SAT. The moment I finished SAT, people were celebrating outside the exam hall. I was like, I have to go home. I have to finish my medical preparation. Oh my God, yeah, I can, I can relate actually. <laughs> that happened like after my ACTs, I was like, no, I'm not done. I have to yeah. study for it. I have to study for this and that on those things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that is, that is very relatable for me as well. And that is kind of the challenge of juggling so many things oh, together. Oh yeah, for sure. Speaking of challenges, uh, I, I'm sure you had your fair share of challenges preparing mm -hmm. for BUET coming from an English medium background. What were some of the challenges and how did you cope with them? Uh, I think the biggest problem for me was the change of curriculum. A lot of people would say like before go, uh, studying the Bangla medium curriculum that 
um, English medium curriculum is harder or better. It's nothing like that. To be honest, the Bangla medium curricular was like the Bengali medium curricular or the board exams were pretty much more uh, advanced in a lot of different aspects. So I had to, you know, catch up to all of those things really fast. So I had to practice a lot and uh, read a lot of books. And one problem I had, uh, funnily, which is like um, um, while studying, was that the books, the English bo- English version books of those, were so um, were not, uh, written poorly. I yes. I really don't want. Hundred, hundred percent. I w- I won't even like have any filters on this. They are so so badly written. Like the translations are outright terrible. Oh yeah, exactly. And it sometimes it's hard to understand what they're asking for or what they want you to do. So yeah, I think it it was a bit of a hassle for me to like change my. Um, uh, my style of studying from you know, whatever I had to like that. Yeah, um, I, I I was curious about this. Did you do you think that your BUET admission preparation helped you for your SAT subject tests or even down the line while studying engineering at Brown? Oh yeah, I would say that um, definitely it did, and I am glad that I actually studied for wood and like studied that curriculum because uh, it helped me first of all for the ACT subject test there were some gaps in my knowledge uh, from um, coming from A levels background so uh, studying Buet, uh, the Buet's curriculum and, like the Bangla medium curriculum and the English medium curriculum that I had actually uh, helped me to fill all the gaps in my knowledge and I actually didn't have to like study that much for a season subject test, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, so we have covered that. Let's move on to a topic, which is if you were to do all all of this all over again, what would you do differently, if anything at all? Uh, to be honest, I think I went through a lot of uh, mental uh, hassles while uh, juggling so much and at that time I felt like I uh, I felt like I had to do it and like I had to be very on the top of it although although my mom used to always tell me that hey you, you should sleep you should eat more and sleep properly if you have to study if you want to study and I think I I sh- would have done that like I would have given myself more breathing space breathing space to like just that uh, like just give myself a break okay. yeah and I think that is very important for everyone yeah to, is to know your limits and sometimes give yourself the time to breathe yeah I agree I think um, when I look back I, I told this story in one of my interviews I think Um, I was studying so much and I was so stressed. I didn't even know it, right? I didn't know how stressed I was because I was like so busy studying. (laughs) One day, uh, I think I had like a, like a major tummy ache after I drank milk. And I, I I told my mom that, Hey mom, like I have a constant habit of drinking milk. I I did it every day in military school. I don't know why my belly is reacting adversely to drinking milk. And my mom was like, Oh, uh, being a doctor, she she's like, oh, this is a symptom of high stress. Oh, I was yeah. like, okay, <laughs> I guess I'm stressed. Um, and oh. looking back, I, I I get I don't know if I would go a bit easy because it worked out. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I feel like maybe I could have prioritized my mental health a bit better. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I will never know. Yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is that I. As I went to Brown, as as I like started uh, uh, taking my uh, school career in my own hand, I realized that sometimes you do need to give yourself uh, yourself some yeah. breathing room. And 
uh, I was actually very stressed and I would get a lot of panic and anxiety attacks and it was really a hard time for me. Yeah. So th- that's why I, w- I say that I think I would give myself okay. more. Yeah. yeah, I can imagine. Um, so speaking uh, of different types of emotions you are feeling at the moment, let's talk about your moments of failure and your moments of success. Let's recall a bit, were there any failures you had during the process and success and how did they affect um, your journey? Um, yeah, so um, I actually did not used to do that well in Sunrise Coaching Center exams okay. and tests. Um, yeah, that was very disheartening for me because I felt like um, I was not going to do well in the actual exam. Um, uh, I would say that was my moment of failure. Another thing was my first um, exam, my first uh, admission test was the DU admission test. And I actually failed it miserably. Like, I, yeah, it was really bad. It oh was, boy. Yeah, and I came out crying because. Yeah. It's because brutal. It was brutal. I hate NCQs, first of all, and it was also, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I despise NCQs. It was uh, NCQs, and also they had, um, what's that? Negative marking for <laughs> wrong answers. And um, yeah, I was completely uh, broken after the exam. I cried and. Uh, after uh, I also didn't get into Boet, uh, do you, sorry, not Boet. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, get, I didn't get the thing I wanted. I wanted to study physics in mm-hmm. uh, do you. That was my first choice actually. So I didn't get it and I was really sad. Yeah. It, was, it was like a really sad moment for me, but I had to study for uh, Boet and give, take that exam again. So it was uh, yeah, it, yeah. as well. So yeah, that was... Um. I, I absolutely relate. I when I gave my medical exam, uh, like I worked so hard, right, for a, like so many months, and then when the results came out, uh, I think among like the top universities, like this is like ninety thousand students apply, right, oh, three thousand yeah. just get in, yeah. and I think the fourth on the list, which is my Munching Medical College, it is like I think it ranges from. 500 to 700 ranked students get into that college, right? My target was Dhaka Medical, which is like zero to one, like one oh, to 120, okay. right? I didn't get into Dhaka Medical. I got into Mamanshing Medical and it was heartbreaking. Uh, oh. And I was like, oh boy, uh, I don't even have time to be sad now because <laughs> now I have to go back home uh, and study for IBA and my subject tests. Oh, yeah. So I, I totally relate. Uh, it, there can be your fair share of failures, and my parents were devastated. They always want dreamt of their kid going to Dhaka Medical, so they were devastated. And um, like my mom was thinking, like if in, in another alternate universe, if I didn't give the SAT uh, simultaneously, maybe I would have got into Dhaka Medical, right? <laughs> oh. um, so it was it, it was a hard time, and I completely relate with you. But let's let's like push aside the negativity now. Talk about moments of victory. How did you feel when you got into Buet? And how I, did that inspire you? Um, so I actually was very surprised to see my <laughs> uh, name on the chart. <laughs> to be honest, it was, it was uh, surreal. And I was very happy. I was like genuinely happy that I got what I got, which uh, the position I got. Uh, and I, and I also took like biomedical engineering there and I got it. That was the second victory for me that I got my first choice. And I, I think I was the last one to get it. Oh, wow. That, that is clutch. Yeah, yeah. That is clutch. <laughs> yeah. So I was actually pretty happy. And I think that's the time I realized that, yes, yeah, so, um, it, it pays off, you know? Yeah. If you, if you try uh, you, like, you should try hard enough uh, every time and yeah it just it was it very, pays off yeah it pays off it pays off <laughs> what, ab- what about that moment when you got into brown how was that <laughs> <laughs> funny story <laughs> so uh, 
that uh, i uh, what happened was uh, the results came in at like really really late at night yeah like 3 a.m or 4 a.m yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 exactly so i uh, i woke up at that time and looked at my letter and i got in so i was like oh my god i got in i didn't know what to say what to do because everyone was sleeping at the house yeah and then i went to my parents and i told my parents that hey i got into brown and my parents were like okay <laughs> <laughs> classic classic bengali parents reaction oh my god but my mom was really happy later and yeah <laughs> i mean yeah <laughs> like, i mean okay. yeah <laughs> uh i'm glad i know i for for the audience watching uh if you feel that you want to see another interview of the wonderful shweta here on her profile on her successful profile on getting into brown like this video right now and let me know in the comment section if i get enough comments or if i get 100 likes on this video i will publish a video interview of shweta's profile of brown Uh, thank you so much for sharing your journey of juggling Buet and Brown together. I hope it will give answers to a lot of students who are trying to um, tackle that same situation, specifically for a lot of English medium students, um, Bangladeshi students in general, and I think international students all over the world who kind of have to tackle different things together. Um, for those watching, if you want more interviews like this, you know what to do. Uh, subscribe right now help us win over the youtube algorithm please like it is essential for the survival of this channel smash that thumbs up button if i get enough request you will see another video from shweta talking about her successful brown profile if you ever see her um on the streets or if this video helps you feel free to thank her send her a follow request i don't know don't annoy her too much <laughs> that's that's bad i will leave her facebook and instagram um on the description below and you can then i don't know follow her and see what she has been up to in her wonderful life mm -hmm. but thank you so much for uh, for this interview hopefully we can get you on the channel once again <laughs> sure yeah